Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This video is about the new Nautis home uh, simulator. So as a person with a marine background, shipbuilding background, um, and somebody who loves simulators, I've always been looking for a good ship simulator. And uh, several years ago now, let's uh, see how even old this video is I've got up nine years ago. Um, I think it's the last time that there was a reasonable ship simulator out on the market. So this was called Ship Simulators, Ship, ship Simulator Extremes. I think it grew from Ship Simulator 2, uh, both from V-Step um, and Ship Simulator Extremes was kind of a, a more gamified version that was uh, put on the Steam store, so you can still get it from Steam. And it was pretty good. If I play this video here, um, I'll just put the sound off. You can see here, you know, we've got a, a sort of azimuthing a tugboat here. You could even co connect uh, tow ropes, you can see there. So there was a physics. Um, you can see that the tugboat's bobbing up and down. So there's some basic hydrodynamics going on there. And you can see as we increase this tugboat, it will pull this barge away. And you could do this, um, you know, with other vessels in the game. So you could uh, use a tugboat and let's say, tow a container ship off its berth and do all sorts of interesting things. And you see there, there is a sort of modicum of physics there where as you tow, um, it will um, basically do the physics around this this point of uh, towage here. So it will kind of rotate around that. That's why this is in the middle of a uh, tugboat, in case you're wondering. And you can see here you had semi-realistic controls. So you had these two independent um, thrusters or Voith Schneider or whatever they were. Um, you could actually walk around the vessels, you could um, operate them from the bridge um, you, and you could actually switch between multiple vessels in a scene. So you could click on the tugboat here or click on the barge and this meant that you could effectively um, control multiple vessels in a scene. However, uh, you can see I think it's still tied on there. You can see that it's um, single player as well so this is just a single player and yeah there is uh, now one of those lines has been undone there's one at the back but they've not seen it um, I'll just skip forward and you'll probably see this goes off and you could do towing so for me you know being able to tow around the harbor and having basic physics was a pretty cool thing to have. And I was like, oh, imagine they could do this multiplayer. That's all I wanted was multiplayer. I didn't want better physics. I didn't want, you know, better scenery, but nothing happened for years until, um, it was actually before COVID, V-Step, the, the developers of mar professional maritime simulators and other simulators, as you can see here, um, they announced that they were gonna make this personal version called Nautis Home. Um, so I was totally hyped up about this um, and you can see here it's marine professionals and enthusiasts to experience real realistic ship simulation. So they're bringing a lot of their professional simulator into a package um, that could be used for professional training or for simulator marine enthusiasts like myself. It unfortunately got delayed by COVID. It was one of the victims of the pandemic. Um, but a few months ago now, I um, can't really remember, man. maybe it was uh, as far back as November or something like that uh, last year, they did release this early access um, and that's what I'm going to have a look at it. So uh, you can see there, um, have a look at their website, you can see there that's their professional level one um, and this is the one which we're going to look at today, not as home. So just have a quick look at these other ones because their professional level one is pretty amazing these days. It's come a long, long way. Um, and Notice Home is this version uh, here, which you can access, you can download, you can sign up for uh, via the website. So once you do that, you get the program, um, you have to pay a subscription for it to get access to it, it will download the version, and you've got this home here, you can access learning content, which is not yet there. Uh, this is um, e-learning content as far as I understand. Um, and inside the app, as you'll see later, there are some basic courses and there's a whole bunch of scenarios which are available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how the simulator operates, what it looks like, what you can do in it today, and then I'll have a look at some of the content that you get with it. So um, I'm just going to run it on one screen today, but it's worth mentioning that all of these 
screens here can be popped out and dragged into other screens. I do have a second monitor today. Um, or you can just have them as overlays here and you can turn them on and off. So we're not going to be using the chart very much, but I will mention that um, you know these are accurate maritime charts. And in the latest update, as you can see here, they added actually some of the navigation uh, boys, which is pretty interesting. So that's, I'm not too sure if that's a bridge or something over there, but um, it's getting more and more realistic. So of course, all of this data is on OpenStreetMap. Um, I'm not too sure if they guaranteed accuracy of um, these markers and boys and what the deal is there, what you get for your money, but um, you can rest assured that these are gonna be pretty accurate uh, harbor charts or coastal charts. They've got a few areas you'll see later. Um, yeah, so um, what can you see? So you start off inside. I'm gonna turn my audio up so you can hear a little bit of that. So you can hear the engine there probably just humming in the background. And it's a kind of spatial sound, so as you turn around, it gets louder or more quiet. Uh, or it, it pans left to right, so I should say. You won't get that on the recording. Um, I'm going to start with views because people like to see that. So you can flip between different views at the moment. You cannot walk around the vessels like you could before yet. Um, there's a stern view. So I'm just going to close some of these off so you can get a little bit more of a clear view and you can see the models are pretty nice um, you know you do get much much better in things like Microsoft Flight Simulator but they're not bad at all um, yeah don't expect any interaction of the cranes and things like that um, I'm saying that because many of the people who watch my channel um, do use or play a game called Stormworks where you have full interactivity of everything on board the vessels or, or as much as the creator has done. But you can see, yeah, the vessels are accurate. Um, they've got obviously a library of vessels. And I think the important thing to mention here is that they've also got the hydrodynamic behavior of these vessels as far as I understand. So there we are. Um, we're just sitting on takeover. I'm going to drive this from outside. Uh, in the beginning, so I need to bring up my uh, controls and my conning. So this is basically the instrumentation um, that's going to tell you position of your thrusters, rudders, speed over ground, um, heading, and all sorts of things that you need in order to operate a vessel. Um, and these are your thruster controls, so it's got a bow thruster by the looks of it, which is oh, slightly odd. And you can hear the engine noise come in here. So I'm going to sync these and just take her away um, yeah, in this direction. So, so that is basically turning these two aft, um, must be nozzled propellers, I assume, um, in that direction. And that's going to thrust us off in this direction. So I've synced sync these azimuths. Um, we can now put an autopilot on. It will try to hold course. And I would say that the physics, of course, as expected, feel uh, absolutely accurate. And of course, this is the big difference, I think, between this and any other simulation uh, out there, that they're going to really go for this accurate simulation. One thing I'll mention is that this application has been made with physics from Algorix, which is a company in Sweden. Uh, I know them from previous life. And they make a very realistic um, physics engine. They do hydrodynamics, they do particle grain um, f simulation and all these kind of things. You can see here the vessel is making a little bow wave, which looks accurate as well. We don't have the most detailed you know, particle effects on the bow or anything like this. We don't have spray or we've got a pretty basic particle effect going on there. But that bow wave is pretty important for me that it feels uh, accurate. And then the other thing, of course, is that the, the, the simulation, so how this accelerates, how this speed up, should be true to the actual vessel. Um, so I can hear those engines running up there. I'm just going to reduce the recording sound. Uh, we don't have an RPM anywhere. We don't have any engine information. Um, it really sounds like it's revving now. Uh, autopilot is on, so I'm just going to use this to bring her along the channel, doing 13 knots. 
Um, you see there's a bit more of a wake effect here. So it's pretty good. It's pushing its little bow wave along as um, tugboats do, kind of expecting the water to come down a bit more and have a little bit more accurate representation there. There is a little bit of a displacement wave forming, but it's not quite what I expect. Um, anyway, pretty, pretty nice, um, you know, from this point of view. You can uh, motor along here at realistic speeds and navigate this whole harbour of, uh, of Rotterdam, as you can see here. Um, it's a bit dead. I think there are some scenarios where there will be more vessels in here, but um, you don't have any control about uh, traffic and the AI stuff at the moment. Um, but you have this pretty simple uh, display of information here. No engine information. There's some things I'd like to see in there. One other comment is, because I've been involved in the project, is that, and I've wrote to developers about this, um, there's a EU project called Open Bridge where they're basically trying to standardize on electronic displays of bridges. Um, it's kind of led by Oslo University of Design or Architecture, I think. Uh, Kettle Nordby, I think. Um, sorry if I'm uh, destroying your name there, but there is a project to standardize on these things and I, I asked them why haven't you standardized an open bridge but they've obviously done this design there's a ux designer there it's there's nothing wrong with this stuff at all it's very clear easy to read but it would have been nice to see that open bridge stuff in here uh, to have that absolutely standardized on on what the industry has come up with um yeah so that's your conning i'm going to get rid of this just as we cruise along here um, the chart we've looked at, um, we can actually dynamically change uh, the conditions. I don't think we're going to get a sea state here, so it's affecting ocean waves. Um, let's increase the wind. All right, so the wind will affect here. Let's put heavy rain, full cloudiness, terrible visibility. Yeah, this is for me much more what it's usually like in Rotterdam. Um, so you get pretty good weather effects there, pretty good wave effects. Um, what I've noticed is that if I take autopilot off, you're not really having any drift effect from the wind as far as I understand. So this is a hard wind from the right, the zero heel. Uh, you might not get it, but at before eight or nine, I would have expected a little bit of heel. So yeah, physics is good in some areas. Um, but I'm I'm kind of a little bit disappointed. I guess Stormworks has, has spoiled me because you've got that that wind effect on on uh, vehicles already. So um, yeah, yes and no to some of this physics here. What I'm really looking forward to is um, multiplayer, and they do have this on their roadmap. Um, I really hope that they do deliver it. I think that's a, an essential thing. Um, because not many applications have that today because multiplayer could allow you to do uh, more complex operations with multi-vessels. Uh, I'm an absolute multiplayer fan. Everything has to have multiplayer. But I can understand from the developer's point of view, it's, it's very hard to add multiplayer into an application. Um, so that might not happen at some point. Um, yeah, let's just go back inside here. So one thing I will say is that you'll see here that it's pretty dark. Um, there's no interior lighting, all this kind of stuff doesn't work. Um, none of these screens work pretty much. So there's loads to be done here till we even get to the level of, you know, Stormworks. Uh, you can interact with the controls like you could on the older games. It's only through this interface at the moment. So yeah, it feels like there's just a lot to do. Uh, you can use your keys here. Um, it's slightly counterintuitive here way this works and there you can see that nice you know physics happening as you move your thrusters around there so i'm just tapping the keys here so it's probably a little bit overpowered um i'd certainly like to see this interior lighting here just and and of course have these instruments i think there's an expectation in the sim community that uh, all of this kind of stuff kind of works especially if you look at stormworks and the ability uh, to have fully interactive touch screens and navigation on that very, very low fidelity simulation. Um, but let's hope that V-Step, you know, get the support to develop this in the way that it needs to be. I'd love to see these lights interactable, anchoring, you know, everything on, the, on board the vessel. 
I think would be pretty interesting. But don't forget, it's a navigation um, simulation. So it's mostly about teaching seafarers how to navigate, uh, how to maneuver, um, how to use their engines. And that's really what um, seafarers need to learn in the beginning, at least uh, helms people, people on the bridge. So, um, good sounds, I must admit. I do like the th sort of throbbing of the engines. Um, what If I go back out of here, what you'll find is that um, I'll take you out and show you what kind of vessels and what kind of scenery you have. The whole app doesn't feel very optimized at the moment, but that's, again, expected from simulators. So, um, I assume there's fairly strong physics calculations being done on the CPU. But I've got a 3080 Ti, which is not the best graphics card anymore, but it is not running super high frame rate. I can tell you that already. Um, yeah, so just to show you a, bit, a little bit more about the content, this basic um, training here, uh, but they now have added maneuvering training here. And these courses are very good. They're very hard to do some of them. You really need to be able to maneuver and understand the weight and the inertia of the vessel um, that you're um maneuvering and you can see there's more advanced ones there uh there's exploration scenarios and what i've done is gone into free room where you can pick from uh, all of these beautiful uh, environments which are very accurate although from a graphics point of view not uh, totally amazing so there's only one page there um and you can pick from uh, quite a large variety of vessels um, so you can see here inland waterways for important maneuvering a variety of different vessels and you have a second page here where we've, they've added a couple of vessels in here. So a fairly good selection of vessels. Um, I have uh, driven, if you like, um, the car ferry here, the cruise ship, and again, the physics feel very good. So the cruise ship, of course, taking significantly long time to get going compared to the uh, the tugboat or the more powerful smaller vessels uh, simply having a lot of inertia there uh, i'm just going to check in settings no i can't do anything on my graphics here um so there's a fair amount of content in ability to change weather um but in terms of the simulator itself it's relatively limited so the main advantage i would say is you know accurate momentum and physics and movement of the vessel. So if you want to get a feeling for how a vessel moves around, then it's worth picking this up just now. Otherwise, you're kind of limited in what you can do. You can run through all of those courses, um, which will challenge you. Um, but I would say kind of wait and see where these applications go. So look at the roadmap. It's pretty interesting what's going on. Um, and maybe there's a point where it's worth jumping in. For me, multiplayer, it's a big thing for the home enthusiast because it means you can get on and do some scenarios uh, with your friends. And I think that's usually what people want to do from an entertainment point of view. Probably also extremely interesting having network sessions as well, where you're perhaps a pilot boat coming up next to a container vessel in rough weather or tugboat doing tug operations in a harbor like this. So pretty interesting, um, but in, on the other side, it's a little bit disappointing that there's uh, no lighting, a little bit, you know, lack of um, detail in some of the, the bridge environments for now. Uh, the other thing, big thing, of course, because I'm, you know, the VR guy, um, is that I would really like to see this work in VR because that is what will make a ship simulator really unique. Um, in case the V-Step people are watching, uh, every simulator that's out there just now, every flight, flight simulator supports VR because people actually think it's worthwhile overcoming the friction of wearing a VR headset because the experience is so much better. So I think it's going to be the same for uh, marine simulators as well. And I think um, uh, you can see that in this Norwegian company. Um, I can't remember its name just now. Is it Nor Nordisk or something like that? Who have a very good marine simulator using VR, using OpenBridge, by the way. Uh, but that's not commercially available. So I can understand from the V-Step you know, product management point of view, um, there's probably all sorts of commercial considerations and resources that need to be considered as well. Um, interesting application, get it if you want really realistic physics. And of course, like me, get it to support the developers and help them make it into what it could be, because I think the potential here is really, really high. That's all from now. I hope you enjoy the video 
and have a great day. Bye for now.